Welcome to Remnant Online Followers. Please kindly subscribe. Thank you. The first pillar of power is what we call spiritual altars. <laughs> spirit are light on altars. And altars are the convergence point of spirits. A man without an altar will remain a storyteller all his life. Every time power was wrought in scripture, there was an altar backing the one that commanded power. If there is no altar in a man's life, forget it. It's a story. I will show you what an altar is. But let me show you two scriptures very quickly that validate this position. In 1 Samuel chapter 7, verse 12 to verse 14, the Philistines were making a mess of Israel. Israel began to live in tremble. The armies of Israel were, 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 were rendered helpless in the face of the prevailing circumstances. And Samuel realized something. He said there is a way to unlock the spiritual dimension of Israel. Israel is not only natural. Because he said, who are the Israelites? He said, unto whom pertained the covenant. The giving of the law. The promises. In Romans chapter 9 verse 4. Israel is not only natural. If Israel wants to take advantage of only his natural side, he will be vulnerable. So the only way Israel will prevail is to unlock the supernatural side. And what is the way to unlock it? He said he hewned a rock and he planted it as an altar. And he called the name of the rock Ebenezer. And he said the hand of God was perpetually against the Philistine. And he said the Philistine ran back and never returned all the days of Samuel. How did Samuel invoke power? By erecting an altar. Every time an altar appears, a spirit is commanded. The integrity of a spirit responds to altars. Because altars are the alighting spots of spirit. If a man can erect an altar, that man can command the presence of a spirit. The way to summon and to keep spirits working with you is by the altars that back you up. Without altars, there will be no power. And I tell you the truth, there are many Christians without altars. I'm not talking about going to raise a stone. I will tell you how to raise an altar in this dispensation. The moment a man understands the role of an altar, he can summon his spirit. This is what happened. It was God that told Israel to kill the king. But the king knew something. Because spirits are legalistic creatures. If a spirit sees an altar, it becomes impossible for that spirit to stay in one position. The altar regulates him. The way of men of power is the way of altars. In Genesis chapter 12, when Samuel came to an end of his life, Israel wanted a king. He said, that's not the way of God. But since that's what you said, I will show you that it is God you have sinned against, not me. And he said, it is not time for the wheat. That means it's not raining season. But I will call on the name of the Lord and God will reign from heaven now. What kind of man is that? What gives that level of audacity? See, audacity in the spirit is not in your size. It is in what you know. The guy knows a mystery. And he knows so long as that mystery stands, every time he speaks, God will respond. So even in dry season, he can manipulate nature because he knows where he's standing. He's standing on the premise of a mystery. If I speak now, God will respond. And he commanded rain to fall in dry season. And the Bible said, God thundered from heaven and rained. He didn't consult with God first. Go and read the scripture. He didn't consult with God. He told the people, I will do it, it will happen. Because he knows the mystery. Meanwhile, Christians are begging, hoping that things will change. Hope? Who told you spirits are ready? The devil cometh not but for to kill, to steal, and to destroy. Nothing happens by chance. If you hope and hope is all you have, you will die with it. There is a way to rule. It's the way of the altars. God spoke to Abraham. He said, get thee out of thy country, out of thy kindred, and out of thy family. And come to the land that I will show you. In blessing, I will bless you. Genesis chapter 12 from verse 1 to 3. Abraham had God. But it doesn't mean anything will change. The moment Abraham entered Moriah. In Genesis 12 verse 6. He said he raised an altar to the Lord that appeared to him. Abraham migrated from Moriah and came to Bethel. Genesis 12 7. He said he raised an altar to the Lord. Genesis 13 to 18. Abraham came to Mamre. He raised an altar to the Lord. He knew the secret of power. And when you see this man commanding things without thinking, you think it's by mimicking them. If you wear a white suit and you don't have an altar, you'll be in trouble. 
It's not an act. It's a life in the spirit. He had an altar. And Abraham did so many terrible things that you can't explain with English language. In Genesis chapter 14, verse 14 to 15, they took Lot, Abraham's cousin, and all five kings attacked a nation, took Abraham's cousin. And the Bible said Abraham took 318 trained servants of his household and he did something. He said Abraham divided himself among them. Where did he learn it from? Because on altars we learn mysteries. Abraham was the one that had the covenant. He said Abraham divided himself among them. So there were 319 Abraham. And one Abraham is a nation. So it was now 319 nations against five nations. There is no way you can win. He learned it on the altar. He divided himself. Abraham is a nation. And there became 319 Abraham. So 319 against five. How can you win? So he came back with spoils. There are mysteries they know. There are mysteries these men know. Because they decided to commit their lives to altars. What are the altars in your life? And then you come and say, we will change this world. We will take over this world. How? How? Are you not psyching yourself? Nothing will happen. This thing will not come to pass. They will take this world. Talk us. So you have 10 million Christians. They can't change anything. But bring five families to one location. If they say night, we come night, we come. And we have a thousand times more authority than these people. One Christian, not a preacher, one Christian can subdue 2,000 herbalists if he knows the life of the spirit. But unfortunately, we don't. Joshua went to battle. And Joshua was fighting. And it was about to, to get late. And he stood and said, the sun should remain there. The moon should remain there. Is that a normal man? Is that a normal person? And it's the same Christianity you and I are practicing. We, we even have the Holy Ghost. If you read this Bible and you pay attention to it, you will cry. If you check your life, you will cry. But the reason it looks as if we are helpless is because our life is committed to nothing. An altar, in its most simplistic sense, is commitment to deity. In the New Testament context, it's not a pillar of stone. It's commitment to deity. God will make a demand of you. And you will be committed to that demand as though you swore an oath by two immutable things in which God cannot lie. There must always be an oath. So every demand God makes on your life becomes an altar. If you keep to it, God will be committed. So there are many of us today that we don't even remember the demand God makes of us after three days. There are certain people God came to them and said, don't be defied until you get married. And God told them when they were in secondary school, but they didn't know it was an altar. So they let go. They thought, oh, what, what is about this virginity? They say, yeah, you are not a wise person. Yeah, I look at, you have lost the secret of your power. If you like, go for 1,000 impartation service. You have lost something. You will never recover from it. Those loopholes you open is what the devil will exploit. God shows up. He said, for you, no more Twitter. No more Instagram. No more Facebook. And then after three days, <laughs> okay, uh, what did that person say there? You delete Facebook from your phone, but you are looking at it in somebody else's phone. You don't know it's an altar. And when an altar is erected, a spirit is watching. A spirit is watching. And then you don't know why you are crying and making demand and nothing happens. You will not be powerful because you violate the demands of altar. The road to power is not so difficult. But is, is will you keep the demands of power? Go and check your life. Every time you had a conspicuous shift, there was something you obeyed. Every time. Because these are not the reason why God gives you the power in the first place. But it's a sign of commitment that you are mature to handle it. Because you don't cast precious things to swine. They will trample on it. Because they don't know their value. The secret to power. When we rise up, it's our consecration that speak. Not our voices. Because when we talk, the spirits know. They see through the canopy of darkness. They know what God told you. And they know whether you kept the demands of that covenant. That's why we are numerous, but we are not strong. We are weak. Many are infantile. He gathered 32,000 people. But at the end of the day, only 300 were ready for war. Our strength is not in our number. Our strength is in our stature. 
and the stature of a man is the depth of his commitment to the spirit that he, he based allegiance to what is the level of your commitment christians are not committed to nothing nothing and even when god puts his word in the mouth of his servant and tells them because they have a wrong mindset they think you want to exploit them we will struggle for a long time until we become committed this thing is not about whether i'm sinning or not sinning sinning is for children in the kingdom it's children that sin it's for children when we are talking kingdom we are not even talking sin it's for children it's for the immature he said i write unto you children because your sins are forgiven <laughs> he said in all little children if anyone sing, sin among you you have an advocate with the father when he comes to the mature he said the word of the lord is in you you have overcome the evil one and you are strong when he came to the father he said you have known him that's from the beginning we don't talk sin in this context we are talking matters of legislation we are talking matters of responsibility for those who can handle inheritance the heir so long as he's a child different nothing from his servant that's why the child seems like a sinner what we are talking about is not sin we are talking covenant they are businesses of altars sometimes it's even your sleep he shows up and says, don't sleep between 12 to 3 and you will do it for six months nothing happened you didn't know that you were watering your heaven and when the clouds be full of rain to empty itself upon the earth because that thing you did is for the day when he will send you to afghanistan and so while others are falling by bullets and blight you walk as if you are invincible because he went ahead of you and he, pro he provided your insurance but that time you were praying you prayed you didn't see an angel you heard that somebody has prayed after one month he saw an angel and because you didn't see an angel you say kai i won't pray in the night again what is this what is this is he is he oh boy this thing you have to rest oh hey. You don't know that the habitation of the earth is full of darkness. That's why I say, have respect unto the covenant. For the dark places of the earth is the habitation of cruelty. It is all tasks that makes us invincible. If I give my friend this microphone now, he can call your name, call the names of everybody in your family. And he will tell you who your ancestors are, what they did. He will just be talking as if he's reading it. But there was a time when God said, tie your face for three days, don't open it. And you now say, ah, if somebody is fasting, should he tie his eye? They are mysteries. The secret of the Lord is with them that fear him. He will show them his covenant. Altars. When we see mighty people do things, go and hear their stories. So I read the story of great men. Because I know their secret is locked in their stories. I know it is locked in their stories. Many Christians live lawlessly. They live by our emotion. When you wake up, that's when you wake up. When you sleep, that's when you sleep. When you are hungry, you eat. Whatever you feel like eating, you eat. And you think you can be anything. Spirits are not like that. They are governed by laws. And if we must change our world, we must become creatures of the altar. Because altars is what makes men powerful. Even if you are not part of the covenant, if you know the mystery of altar, you can provoke an intervention. In Acts of the Apostles chapter 10, he spoke of an, a man who is of the Italian band. That's a Gentile. He was not entitled. But he knew something. He said his prayers and his alms giving have risen to heaven as a memorial. And God himself, an angel was sent to him. The angel was sent to Peter. Peter wanted to resist. He commanded Peter to go there. While Peter was here talking, the Holy Ghost fell on them. The Lord becomes urgent upon your intervention. Why do you think? He said some men, why they are here thinking? God answer. Before they utter their voice, God respond. Is the covenants they have. Those covenants are utterances in Zion. It rises to heaven as a memorial. Before they talk, their covenants have made an announcement. Did you not read about, 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 about Abel? He said his blood rose up to heaven and brought petition before God in the courts of heaven. Even while he was dead, his blood spake from the ground. Why? He brought a more excellent sacrifice than Cain. The power of altars. When you see men shaking the world, they have something. It's not, a it's not by chance. God is not a respecter of persons. God responds to your altar. And the potency of your altar is a function of the quality of your commitment to the laws and the demands God makes on your life. From the days of thy youth, thou have known the holy scriptures, which is able to make thee wise unto salvation. Why do you think many men live as if the devil doesn't exist? He said, give a portion to seven. Give a portion to eight. You don't know the evil that will come upon the earth. What does it mean? Even if the earth crumble, there are people who will survive. 
in the midst of war, in the midst of earthquake, they live as if nothing happened. Why people are begging for palliative during COVID-19? Some people were living in luxury. Because even if evil come on the earth, they will survive. Because they have engaged a mystery. If they cry, heaven will obey. And how beautiful it is when children begin to do these things. When children, children begin to do these things. Because out of the mouth of babes and sucklings, you have ordained strength. It's possible. At what age was David when he killed the bear? Early teenagers, rotting wonders. But you read it, you say, well, it's Bible days, it's Bible. So you approach it religiously. You didn't know that that guy was 14 years. A 14-year-old person killed a lion. Before 17, he killed a bear. But you read it casually. Because you don't think on the word. Some of us are already too old for this generation. We are already too old. It's in our thirties we are manifesting and we say we are young. Oh boy, God, they do something. Else. What certain persons in the old covenant were doing at the age of 17, we are doing after 30 and we say, we are doing, ah, we are shaking this wall. Because we didn't have regard for the covenant. Altars were not part of our lives. What is it that God has told you to do that you have violated? That's the key to your power. You will read all the scriptures on power. You will understand the doctrine of power, but you'll be shocked. Because the spirit will not bear witness. The Bible said something. In Isaiah 53 from verse 5, it said he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. By his stripes, we were healed. We are healed. It came in 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 2, 2 verse 24. And it said he bore our sicknesses on himself. By whom stripes, we were healed. But the way it came to pass was the response of Jesus. In Matthew chapter 8 verse 16, he said that it might be fulfilled. So the scripture is one thing. The faithfulness of God is another thing. So you can know the doctrine, but if you don't attend to God, you may not see the faithfulness of God. Because when God reached out to you, you shut yourself out. The reason that scripture came to pass is because God responded. It's when we are in danger that we want to provoke intervention. And that's why most times it doesn't work. Because we don't know the key to power. The second pillar of power is the mystery of energy balance. God flows as energy. If you don't know how to conduct God, you may never see result. Because spirits, they flow like energy. So when the power of God is trapped in a man, the conduction of that power is very important. If you don't master the mystery of energy, you will keep choking or diffusing the energy you generate. So a man can generate enough energy, but he will deplete it. It's possible for you to fast for 40 days and you have raised, generated an energy that will raise the dead, but five second gossip will diffuse energy of 40 days. So when he say don't gossip, he's not just talking about serving God. He's teaching you how to rule on earth. It's a mystery. When he say don't backbite, when he said, don't keep malice, he is telling you, these things are depletors of the soul. It corrupts the soul. So everything you absorb, remember, he said in Ephesians 3.20, God is able to do exceeding abundantly, above all you can ask or think, according to the power that is at work within you. When you stare that power through whatever means, and there are many means of stirring power, it could be speaking in tongues, it could be worship, it could be by giving, it could be by responding in sacrifice, whatever it is that is consistent with your design. But after you have generated power, what you do matters. It's a mystery of energy balance. Because the energy you generate, you must use it. If you don't apply it, you will waste it. And whether you apply it by faith or you waste it by a sinful life, is your choice. So, three people can fast for 40 days. One of them will become a champion. The other two will end up as prayer warriors. And every time you meet them, they will tell you they have been fasting for 30 years now. It's not a record. Because it's what you did with that fasting that benefits human humanity. He said it's the manifestation of the spirit that profit. I've been in church for 25 years. Oh, you know, when we came here, that time Christianity was not popular. Thank God. But what, where are the fruits? Where are the fruits of your labor? Most times they waste it. This is why every time you leave a spiritual place, God becomes strict with you. There are times when you come out of the place of prayer, your friends are coming, he said, don't talk to them. 
You don't know the way of a spiritual man. People will be hot, but you are guiding something. Did you read the story of Manoah's wife? When she was pregnant with Samson, he said, don't drink any strong wine. You become consecrated unto God. If you drink any strong wine, you will violate the Nazarite. So if you like, be her mother. If you like, be her father. If you like, have a wedding event. If she comes there, she will not drink. You can be offended. It's not her fault. She's preserving something. She's incubating something. Men of power, they can manage energy. They can culture energy. They can cultivate energy. They can keep it. That's why spiritual men don't talk. It's not an act. They are keeping something. They are preserving something. When you see men, so it's not an act. Because it's a mystery. You carry it like pregnancy. You can diffuse it in a moment. And the salvation of another man, you waste it by careless talk. So God can't commit much to you. Why do you think we do a lot of things but we don't see results? We don't understand what makes it work. Sometimes for you to generate this energy, God can give you an instruction. We are sharing this morning is, is the secret of balance. It's a law of nature. When something leaves, something comes. For something to come, something leaves. So God checks the, the, the balances in the spirit and he tells you to do something. Take a three days fast. As you take that three days fast and your body is dead, is deadened, your spirit man opens and God fills you. So what you are doing is that you are emptying your body to be stopped with God. Sometimes he said, take a 10 days, 10 hours tongues. That 10 hours tongue has nothing to do with time. He has checked the gauge of your soul. He wants to saturate you. And as you pray, after 10 hours, your soul opens up and God fills you. That's the way you created a space for Bala. He said, they lifted their voices and as they prayed, the place where they were was shaken and they were filled with the Holy Spirit and they spake with boldness. What happened to them? They depleted boldness from their spirit when they threaten them. Why do you think we do a lot of things but we don't see results? We don't understand what makes it work. Sometimes for you to generate this energy, God can give you an instruction. We were sharing this morning is, is the secret of balance. It's a law of nature. When something leaves, something comes. For something to come, something leaves. So God checks the, the, the balances in the spirit and he tells you to do something. Take a three days fast. As you take that three days fast and your body is dead, is deadened, your spirit man opens and God fills you. So what you are doing is that you are emptying your body to be stuck with God. Sometimes you say take a 10 days, 10 hours tongue. That 10 hours tongue has nothing to do with time. He has checked the gauge of your soul. He wants to saturate you. And as you pray, after 10 hours, your soul opens up and God fills you. That's the way you created a space for Bala. He said they lifted their voices and as they prayed, the place where they were was shaken and they were filled with the Holy Spirit and they spoke with boldness. What happened to them? They depleted boldness from their spirit when they threatened them. Never preach in the name of this man again. So the little boldness they carried diffused from their soul. So they went back to the place of prayer. They were generating boldness. They knew what they came for. It's a transaction. Check Matthew chapter 8. He said, Jesus went to the mountain, prayed all night. When he saturated himself with energy, he came down. The first person he saw, his hand was withered. And he said, Master, if you are willing, you will make me who He said, I'm willing. Stretch thy hand. And the hand stretched. He went to Peter's mother-in-law. She was taken with fever. He rebuked the fever. That same evening, he went out. The moment he had energy, he wanted to do everything that time. He knew. He wanted to do everything. He healed the man with the withered hand. He went to Peter's mother-in-law. He left Peter's mother-in-law. He went straight to a crusade. And he went to the crusade. He said he healed every one of them that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet. The land of Zebulun, the land of Naphtali, by the way of the sea beyond Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles, the people that sat in darkness have seen a great light. How did he do it? He went to generate power. And when he saw that the power was displaced, depleted, the people were still there. He sneaked out through the back door and went to the mountain. They said the people are seeking thee. The man has gone to the mountain. He knew that this thing is power. The one I came with is exhausted. <laughs> They don't know. In Luke 6, 19, they said they touched him and virtue left him and healed them all. He was feeling himself to dispense. And when he was on top of that mountain, he prayed to the third watch in the morning. And the people had entered the boat they were going. He came walking on water. He had generated fresh energy. So he can defy the law of flotation. He knows how it works. Every time he's refilled, he does a wonder. He came walking on water. And as if that is not enough, let's go over to the other side. He hid the gathering maniac. When the city came, he ran away again. And then you think he's in this language. Ah, oh, God is good. Now oh, touch, now touch. Is virtue leaving you? 
<laughs> and one day, Peter, James, and John, they wanted to understand how this thing worked. And I said, come with me. And he carried them to the mountain. Matthew 17, verse 2. And as he prayed, the fashion of his countenance was altered. His raiment, that's where he refused himself. David was a warrior. Saul came for him. He ran to a prophet. Because he knows the prophet knows something that defies guns, arrows, and bows. And when he came, Samuel carried him to Nahot Ramah, Nahot Ramah, where he generates energy. And they stayed there. The soldiers were coming. The bandwidth had covered the environment. The energy generator became a radar. And when the soldiers entered into the radar, they began to prophesy. Nobody imparted them. Nobody called them a prophet. They began to prophesy. They sent another batch. They showed up. They began to prophesy. And Saul so thought they were foolish. And Saul so came himself. In his own case, that time the energy level had gone so high. So he prophesied naked all night. Nayat Ramah. The place of incubation. You are not powerless. But you don't take advantage of what you use to generate energy. Yours may be tongues. Paul, his own was speaking in tongues. So Paul didn't spend too much time in worship meetings. He said, I speak in tongues more than all of you. Because he knows his own gauge is tongues. There are some other people that is worship. If what churches you is worship, kill yourself there. Worship from morning to night. Night to morning. Morning to night. After, the, after you pray with the intercessor for three hours, leave the intercessors and begin to worship. Because when we pray for some time, all of us enter our elements. And when we enter our elements, there are prophets that minister by sound. So they begin to look for the sound. The moment the sound comes, they are transported. There are other prophets that move with noise. So that prophet, sometimes he, is, he, lives, he goes to a mechanic village where people are talking. As people are talking, he's walking around. He's looking for inspiration. Because when that noise comes, he helps him to harmonize his energy. There's another prophet that hides in a quiet place. So when he's charged, he goes to a solitary place. When he's there, he begins to see vision. Know your dimension. And when you know it, live there. The secret place is not behind closed door. The secret place is where your spiritual dimensions are activated. If it's worship, carry, carry your head gear everywhere you go. Even if you are traveling, put it there. You are in your secret place. You are charging yourself constantly. And there are men that charge themselves, themselves. Even when they died, their bones raised the dead. Energy was there. Energy. They had extra energy. They left this world. They kept reserve of energy in their bones. Thank you for watching. Please kindly like, comment, subscribe, and turn on your notification bell so you always get notified whenever we post a new video. And don't forget to share. Thank you.